Hi, welcome to episode one of my Sankofa series. Here, I'll be exploring Pan-African experiences. Let me start by putting it out there that I'm not doing this series because I believe in returning to a glorious African past in order to find all the answers to current problems of living in Africa or problems of Africans living in the diaspora. Neither am I doing it in order to teach history. People who are familiar with the meaning of the word Sankofa, which I've chosen as the title of the series, might then wonder why I've chosen it since Sankofa means go back and get it. Apologies to native Tui speakers if my translation is not precisely accurate. Sankofa as a saying symbolized by a bird which is looking backwards as it takes flight has fascinated me since I first heard it about 20 years ago. The word Sankofa comes from Ghana and a Dinkra symbol for Sankofa represents it as a mythical bird flying forward with its head turned backwards. For many years, I used to wear a bronze bracelet with this symbol on it. The bird depicted in my bracelet had an egg in its mouth, which I was told represents germs of knowledge available in the past. The bird is seen holding the egg in its beak as it takes flight forward. I know there could be several explanations for this, but my favorite is that the bird takes from the past useful knowledge which helps it to build a positive present, thereby laying a solid foundation for future generations. In the same vein, I believe that by knowing our history, we'll know how we got to be where we are today, and so be better positioned to structure our present and a future for generations of Africans and Africans in the diaspora. I'll be looking at transnational territories and other possible terrain that might exist for new generations of Africans and Africans in the diaspora. Hopefully, I'll cover a wide range of topics and interviews with other people. I'll be depending on your comments and questions to help me structure future episodes. So please keep those comments and questions coming. My primary approach is to inform by sharing knowledge that I find in order to inspire you to educate yourself about who you are. For starters, I'll be challenging a lot of the lopsided history that's out there. So starting from this episode, as I'll continue to do from time to time, I'll share with you my take on aspects of African history that I found that helped me question some of the so-called world histories that I was taught in school. A lot of which is unfortunately still out there. To be honest with you, although I took some courses in women's history when I was studying for my doctorate, I'm not a historian by any stretch of the imagination. What I am is an African woman, a daughter, wife, mother, and grandmother who has always been a passionate activist. I've written extensively for television and a few stage and radio plays. I've also published a couple of novels and books for young readers. All of my life's works have addressed developmental and social issues. I'm also a co-founder of two schools in Lagos, Nigeria, which provide quality but affordable education for students from low-income families. I love researching, and history has always been one of my hobbies. I have also spent a significant chunk of my life living in Canada. My friends tell me that when I left Nigeria to live in Canada, I was a women's rights activist, but Canada turned me into a race activist. This is not to cast a negative light on Canada, which, at least in my personal experience, is light years from America when it comes to race. Please don't get me wrong. Canada has some awful records when you look into its history and the persistent condition of the First Nations and other minorities like African Nova Scotians. However, I cannot just imagine 
the recent incidents that have led to the Black Lives Matter movement and the ascendance of a character like Donald Trump and the Ku Klux Klan happening in present-day Canada. What I plan to do with the next couple of episodes, as well as from time to time in the near future, is to talk about interesting aspects of African history and spotlight some of the challenges, successes, and failures of Africa, Africans, and people of African descent. I'll also highlight current affairs and share special features, information about books and sources that throw more light on events and people past and present. I really hope that what I share here will inspire you enough to go and dig deeper. My approach to history and indeed knowledge as a whole is to question everything. Even what I share with you, don't just take my word for it. So you might wonder, why am I spending so much time on history? Well, a saying which has been ascribed to Marcus Garvey puts it very well for me. It says, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture are like a tree without roots. I'll say that again. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture are like a tree without roots. Gavi had his shortcomings, but this statement is profound. Think about it. A tree without roots is dead. If it's standing, it's simply being propped up by sand, the earth around it. It will not even take a particularly strong wind to bring it crushing down. Like I said earlier, I really love history. I have very fond memories of my earliest history lessons about the great African civilizations and historical figures like Mansa Musa, Emmanuel Agri, Jaja of Opobo, Nana of Ishekiri, to mention just a few. Although I must confess that because I had a grandmother who regaled me with stories about Dahomean women warriors and even about the achievements of her historical contemporaries like Sisi Charlotte Obasa and Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, I quickly figured out that the history I was being taught at school was incomplete because there were hardly any women in them. In fact, the only woman I remember from those early history classes was Queen Amina of Zaria. This foundation made me question even more the history that I was taught in secondary school, which while purporting to be world history, was mostly European history. My children's generation was even worse off because they were not taught African history in primary school like I was, in spite of the fact that they attended primary school in Nigeria. Another reason why I'm doing this series is because it is, of course, important for the future of Africans and Africans in diaspora to have as many voices emphasizing the fact that civilization did not originate in European countries, as most of the history books out there try to lead us to believe. Neither does civilization end in the countries that now represent the so-called developed world. Unfortunately, most of the history that generations of Africans and people of African descent continue to be taught do not acknowledge that there is even any tangible African history. However, historians like John Henry Clark, please look out for his books. People like John Henry Clark illustrate that it is important for us and our future generations to ask, what was the rest of the world doing when Europeans were supposed to have been developing the light of culture? What some historians are saying is that 
it is ridiculous to believe that the world waited in darkness for Europeans to bring enlightenment. Because Europe itself was in darkness during most of the early historical era. Before rounding up this episode, I'd like to leave you with a question. So why the grand attempt to distort history? Please send me your answers and comments you know, to this question. Why the, the grand attempt to distort history? And please watch out for my next episode where we'll be um, elaborating more on this. Please don't forget to subscribe to this um, channel, like and share with your friends. See you next time.